Hi there and welcome to the Project Corner. Today we're going to look at a question by Acapella Hits. Very cool username. He asks how to create weekly reports where you would distribute that to your team. So roughly two things, maybe three things come to mind when I'm looking at weekly reports. So let's dive into Microsoft Project and here we have a schedule which is pretty big so we can go into time scale and we can set this to a weekly overview where the middle tier is going to be months and the bottom tier is going to be weeks yes there aren't that many weeks in a month setting the bottom tier to weeks and now you have a nice weekly overview. Well, not yet, of course, but you have an overview that is uh, on a time scale of weeks compared to months, which is a nice overview for yourself. But how do I distill the upcoming project tasks here and use that? Well, there is actually two quite nice filters that you can use. Heading over to view, heading over to filter you can click on more filters heading two ways down there's the task due this week and tasks starting soon now let's click on task due this week here you see the tasks that need to be done this week now on the other hand you have the task starting soon this takes a little broader uh, set of activities it isn't uh, a week per se uh, but uh, yeah this is a bit broader and might be uh, doing the trick for you and you can actually dive into them by going into the edit mode and here you will see that week start is question mark end of the week is question mark and this is automatically filled in by Microsoft Project itself uh, to look into the uh, start of the week which is the current week and the end of the week which is also the current week so the task due this week if we click on edit there you will see roughly the same where it looks at the start and end of the week and uh, it automatically fills that in so if you want to have control of that date duration uh, or that uh, date range uh, there's actually another one uh, that might be of interest to you where you can see a date range and if I click on apply here I would see show tasks that start or finish after you can even go into the past here and before Friday I'll click on OK and I'll get the same because this is actually on Friday uh, but I can also change that to show you the actual change happening let's pick Monday yeah Monday is okay and then let's have a look at a broader date range and here you see that you get a bigger uh, set of activities now you can remove the filter again by going into view and then going into clear filter so that is the first option you would just grab those uh, filters and you would select the activities and you would be good to go. Oh, there, there is uh, one interesting thing that I want to mention here. If you have that filter on, um, it is very easy to uh, create a nice little printout. So we can select these activities and you can go to task, copy, copy picture 
So the copy picture option gives you an option to create a uh, GIF file. Yeah, and I'm calling it GIF, so what? And once I have selected all these uh, items, so copy selected rows, or you could set rows on screen, and uh, the date range should be no more than uh, June, I think. Because it wouldn't make sense to have that do it being any longer. Let's set it to this date. And let's click on OK. Now that generates a nice little picture that you can share with your colleagues. And you can add columns here and make that a bit more user friendly for your users. But this is a nice way to generate a image of what is coming up. But this isn't uh, the best solution, of course, um, because there is also a nice little report here. So if you're using 2016 and up, you would have the option to uh, look into these reports. Um, and one of the reports is actually called Upcoming Tasks. And it uses the tasks due this week uh, section here to show you what tasks need to be done this week and how far along they are. And tasks starting soon. So these tasks show up here. This shows up here. You might want to change the percentage complete because this is probably the whole of the project as well as uh, the end date here, which is the, the complete end date of the project. You might want to change that date there. Now, one of the other things that you can do, uh, and you do need to have Project Online and a Power BI subscription for this, but what you can do is you can create a report in Power BI and publish that to an app and distribute that app to your users. So I'm going to show you what kind of report you could create. Um, so here is a, a data source, weekly updates, and it contains the projects, tasks, and time phase data set. Now I've published this information to my project online environment and my uh, Power BI environment. So what I can do now is I can create a new pro I can create a new Power BI file. And once that's loaded, I'm going to connect it to the Power BI datasets Power, Power BI came up with because you don't need to recreate those databases every single time. Well, databases, data sources, obviously. So here's the Power BI datasets. And here is the data source weekly updates that I want to use. So to get the weekly overviews of your tasks, what all you need to do is head on over here, drag and drop the task name. You might want to have work here as well. And you might like to add the time phase data. And we're going to do that from here. And we're going to create a matrix time by day and we're going to use the project name project name so here you have the set of projects that you might be familiar with if you're watching this more channel more often and here you have a couple of tasks and again, a couple of tasks here. You can zoom in on a day-to-day -day level if you would like to. But how do I get a overview that is for the first week or the current week? So let's let's do that right here. I'm going to search. No, I'm not going to search. I know what I need to have. I'm going to grab the time by day from the time set 
and I'm going to set that as a slicer and I'm going to grab this slicer and I say that it is a relative date these relative dates is very useful because I can say, okay, well, let's have a look at the next one weeks. And it will show you the date of today as well as the next seven or the next six days that are upcoming. Now, if you want to look at the complete next week, you can go into weeks calendar and then it heads on over to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And maybe you don't need all these totals here, so you can remove those. Uh, but it's, that's just trimming uh, from this point on. Um, and you can easily uh, extract this data and put it in an Excel. But you might want to have people have this as a mobile list of activities maybe uh, maybe you could add your resource names here as well uh, and filter that uh, uh, here currently I don't have that in the data source so I can't show you that but uh, project it would roughly go uh, a little bit like this where you have your selection of your resources or your selection of your projects in this case and you go into drop down and you just select one of those projects and you'll see what is going to happen upcoming week. Risky project doesn't have anything but this project does. So that's it. Three methods to get a weekly overview of tasks that need to be done and how to distribute them to your team. Uh, Acapella hits. I hope this answers your question. If you have a question yourself, just drop it in the comments below. And Acapella hits. This goes for you too, of course. Uh, if you have other questions, just drop a line. It might take some time for me to answer, but I'm sure to have a look at all the comments. I do read them all personally. So if you like this video, please click that like button. It helps the channel a lot. And um, consider subscribing. With that, Hope to see you all in two weeks.